2016 was infamous for the passing of a lot of celebrities and idols. The biggest one that stood out to me was David Bowie, which is weird because I never actually listened to his music before he died. Of course, I knew a song or two, but that's about it. I mostly just liked him as a pop culture icon. In particular, his acting roles. For example, Nikola Tesla in The Prestige and The Goblin King from Labyrinth. And I've always been a fan of his cameos as well. If nobody has any objections, I believe I might be of service. In other words, I didn't know his work that well, but I certainly did like him being around. About two years later, and I'm in the mindset to explore some new music, so this was my opportunity to check out his discography. So I wish to share with you my introduction to his work, which is not with the better known Ziggy Stardust, but with his Berlin Trilogy. Oh, way! Is, is that? David Bowie. Brock Samson. It's been a while. Not long enough. You're lucky I don't kill you right here after what you pulled in Berlin. David Bowie blew up in America in the early 1970s with the success of his character Ziggy Stardust. But after a while, he was afraid of his career being trapped in a corner and being only known forever as his flashy alien persona. So he killed Ziggy and moved forward to explore new territory. Moving forward, he created the soul-influenced album, Young Americans, which is known for its hit song, Fame. And he premiered The Thin White Duke in the album Station to Station, which is a personal favorite of mine. But as for the man himself, it was one of the darkest and, dare I say, lowest moments of his life. He was suffering with a crippling cocaine problem, and Bowie was desperate to get away from Los Angeles and work towards getting clean. At the same time, he was also in an ongoing legal battle against his former manager, as well as dealing with a struggling marriage. So he grabbed his pal Iggy Pop and went across the world to West Berlin, which at the time was divided with the ongoing Cold War between the United States and the USSR. This drastic change of scenery and lifestyle would help influence his next three albums, which today is known as the Berlin Trilogy. The first album, Low, was released in 1977 and is my first Bowie album thanks to the recommendations of online hipsters. Similar to his previous album, the album art is actually a still from the film The Man Who Fell From Earth, starring, well, uh, David Bowie. This particular image is a profile shot, leading some to the conclusion that the cover art is actually a visual puzzle, meaning low profile, but that is unconfirmed as far as I know. Now it's time to talk about the music itself. The first half of the album is a bop. It's full of catchy, short pop songs. These songs on the A-side get stuck in my head all the time. The stage is set with the opening instrumental, Speed of Life. Now, I love singing along to the song Breaking Glass, but if you ask me what the lyrics meant, I couldn't tell you. Track three is What in the World. Something deep inside of me, yearning deep inside of me, is talking through the gloom. What in the world can I do? If you heard at least one of these songs on this album, or any of these songs were going to be on a best of compilation, it's going to be Sound and Vision. I will sit right down, waiting for the gift of Sound and Vision. And I will say, Track 5, Always Crashing in the Same Car. Always crashing in the same car. Roughly, the song is about falling for the same mistakes over and over again, but there's a little bit more to that. The song is based off a real life event during David's drug problem days. As the story goes, he was driving one day when he spotted out in public a drug dealer that he knew. He believed this drug dealer ripped him off in the past, so in retaliation he slammed his Mercedes-Benz into the drug dealer's car repeatedly. Afterwards, Bowie drove back to the hotel, 
in which he drove his car around in circles in the underground garage. It should be understandable why he was trying to get clean. When you know the context of him moving to a new location, I have an extra appreciation for these lyrics in the next track, Be My Wife. Sometimes you get so lonely Sometimes you get nowhere I've lived all over the world I've left every place The side then closes with the upbeat instrumental, A New Career in a New Town an appropriate title, and also a transition to the new world that is the B-side of the album. When you flip the record over to the B-side, the music pulls a sick 180. It's only four tracks, but it's still nearly the same length as the first half. The album that you thought you knew turns into an ambient, experimental, and almost entirely instrumental experience. Enter Stage Left, a titan of the music industry, and the men credited for creating the genre of ambient music Brian Peter, George St. John, Le Baptiste de la Saw, Eno. These two legends collaborated for the opening track, Warszawa, which is inspired by the desolation Bowie experienced during a previous trip to Warsaw, Poland. A haunting, beautiful track with mysterious vocals supplied by Bowie at the second half of the song. The other three tracks continue the trend of ambient electronic songs that give me a sense of calmness but also unease. Mysterious music. Critics at the time were mixed due to the drastic but Low is now considered a classic by many today. It's time for the popular one. Hopefully you've seen this image before. It's one of Bowie's most iconic when it comes to cover art. In fact, it's so iconic it was reused ironically for the 2013 album The Next Day. It's inspired by the painting Roquerel, created by the German artist Eric Heckel. It was also used for Iggy Pop's The Idiot as well. The second album of the Berlin Trilogy, Heroes, was released later the same year as Low in 1977. The album starts strong by kicking in your door with its opener, Beauty and the Beast. Joe the Lion keeps that momentum rolling. as we roll into the big boy of the album, the title track, Heroes. It is quite likely that I am not your introduction to this song, one of Bowie's biggest hits throughout his entire career. Its release was lackluster, but it aged over time to its current status as a classic. It was inspired by Bowie seeing his producer-engineer, Tony Visconti, embracing a lover of his outside the Berlin Wall. This was kept a secret for decades, since Tony was a married man at the time, but the truth came out eventually after his divorce. I feel like this taints the song a little bit for me, since it's based on an affair, but the spirit and the general message stands on its own. Wrapping up side A is Sons of the Silent Age. Sons of the Silent Age Stand on platforms, blank books, and no books and Blackout. Before I continue, do you remember our friend Brian Eno? Well, he's back, baby, and he's contributing to more than just one song like in Low. In fact, he's already helped out with the title track earlier. As you can expect, we are going ambient once again, just like the second half of Low. Also, for fans of King Crimson, Robert Fripp does guitar work for this album and works with Bowie in future projects as well, just in case you didn't know. Anyway, we are officially in the B side of the album and it is kicked off with the song V2 Schneider. The track is named after a German ballistic missile, as well as a tribute to Florian Schneider, a founder of the German electronic band Kraftwerk. 
afterwards is three tracks of ambience in a row. Sense of Doubt is mostly known to me for its dark descending piano riff. And it is followed by the Eastern influence track, Moss Garden. Nykuren is named after a district in Berlin, and it has an intense saxophone piercing through the eeriness of the track. So far, Heroes follows the same format of low, with a pop-influenced catchy first half and an ambient second half. However, the final track breaks the pattern with a fun, upbeat closer. Due to the drastic tonal shift, people either love or hate this track. Personally, I'm all for it, and I like how it ends on a high note. The album was well received on release, and it is the most successful one of the trilogy. It was the only album that was recorded entirely in Berlin, being the most Berlinist of the Berlin trilogy, I suppose. And with that, we move forward to the third and final album, Lodger. I'm home. Lost my job. Oh, Lodger. Definitely the black sheep out of the three records. Now, don't get me wrong. Just like Low and Heroes, Tony Visconti is producing and Brian Eno is still here, but in terms of similarities, that's about it. If you are a fan of the experimental atmospheric tracks, sorry, it's all pop this time. In a way, this album feels like a sort of homecoming, with Bowie returning back to the style that he is known for. Leading up to Lodger's release, Bowie began to refer to these albums as a trilogy. It is argued that this was simply a marketing tactic to help sell this oddball. If it's a trilogy, how can you not get the last one and complete the set? You can even say this shouldn't be a trilogy at all in the first place. If it is all just marketing, it certainly worked because here we are, decades later. Here's my point. I quite enjoy Lodger, but the problem is that it's doomed to be compared to two very different and well-loved projects. The title, Lodger, is actually quite perfect. It's an outcast that doesn't belong anywhere with no home of its own. Well, I'm going to welcome this poor lodger into my home and view him as his own record. This album cover is a postcard, along with Bowie's legs. Opening the record reveals the full image of Bowie being an accident victim, broken nose and all. Before we get to the music, a thing to note is the major themes. Being such a well-traveled and international man, a lot of these songs have to do with different exotic places around the world, and traveling in general. Another theme is critiquing Western civilization and current politics of the time. When he was the Thin White Duke, he had a controversial fascist phase, so it was probably in his best interest to replace that with his current thoughts on the world. With that all established, onwards to track one. The opener discusses the threat of nuclear war and the grudges that nations hold against each other. We're learning to live with somebody's depression And I don't want to live with somebody's depression in track two, Bowie tells us about a bizarre group of German pilots he met in Kenya who have yet to return back home. He also does his best Busta Rhymes impression. Gonna get a move for a month, that's a night fight, pushing my luck, go fly like a man, then dance to take off, skimming over rhino, born in slumber, less than peace, struggle with a child who's screaming, dreaming, drowned by the drop, so steely, stun child, sick of you, sick of me, lust for the feel, I've crushed and laid, like a high will love one left unnamed, seems like another day I could fly into the eye of God on high. Move On is about travel and mentions a few of the places he has visited over the years. Usher has its horsemen. Spend some nights in Kyoto. Yassassin means to live long in Turkish, and it's about Turkish workers coming to Germany. Track 5 is another song about travel, as well as discovering yourself while you're out of your comfort zone. Track 6 is a mocking take on DJs, who were mostly involved in the disco tech scene at the time. DJ, 
Look Back at Anger seems to be a retrospective look on his career. This could be somewhat supported by the music video, the artist slowly becoming his own work. The song shares its title from the Jack Osborne play from 1956, but there's no relation beyond that. Next is an ironic take on masculinity with Boys Keep Swinging. When you're a boy, you can wear a uniform. When you're a boy, other boys check you out. You the song sets over the top standards for men with a slight gay undertone. Uncage the colors. The message and irony is pushed even further in the music video, where Bowie dresses in drag as his own background singers. Boys. Boys. Boys keep swinging. Boys always work it out. Track 9 covers the upsetting topic of domestic abuse, but it's delivered in a deadpan expression. Can't you even cook? What's the good of me working when you can't damn cook? The vocal performance seems to be symbolic. It's not being all loud and dramatic, but quiet and subdued. Red Money is the final song and is my favorite from Launcher. The lyrics go full circle with track one, Fantastic Voyage, with the theme of uncertainty about the world's current climate. Project Cancel. Tumbling Central. Red money. The song is a rewritten version of Iggy Pop's Sister Midnight, which Bowie co-wrote back in 76. On release, Lodger was met with an overwhelming meh. It wasn't a giant failure, it got up to number 4 in the UK charts, but it certainly underperformed when it came to Bowie's standards. Heroes did set the bar high and Lodger could never get out of its shadow. Brian Eno didn't collaborate again until 15 years later, Bowie moved to New York. It was the end of an era, but also the beginning of something new. The man was at the lowest point of his life. It could have been so easy for him to lose his career and disappear from the public. But instead, like most great artists, he was able to make use of his tragedy and come back even stronger than ever. The Irish band U2 nearly did the exact same thing that he did a decade later. They were on the brink of a breakup, they went to Berlin, they worked with Brian Eno, they took an experimental risk, and then they were able to make a comeback with their album Octune Baby. Beyond the trilogy, I would definitely recommend checking out Scary Monsters and Let's Dance. There's even a little easter egg on the back cover of Scary Monsters. Of course, you're always welcome to go backwards and go into Station to Station and all his successes in the early 70s as well. If I was asked to rank the albums from favorite to least favorite, it would go Low, Heroes, Lodger. I just think that Low is the most solid as an overall project compared to the other two. And as previously stated, it's kind of hard for Lodger to catch up with Low and Heroes. In addition, my favorite tracks from each album is going to be Breaking Glass, Beauty and the Beast, and Red Bunny. Hopefully this video got you interested or at least entertained you. I always like to thank you for watching this and also thank you for letting me ramble about things I enjoy. Until next time. Bowie. Secrets. I was on tour in the United States back in 89 and we did a show in Cincinnati. During that show, I shouted out, It's great to be in Cincinnati. That was a lie. <laughs> you think that being a famous rock star, married to a supermodel, would be one of the greatest things in the world. It is. <laughs>